Hi class, it's Bill Berry with a week 3 supplemental video on the JUnit testing framework. In other videos I've shown you how to do a sort of roll your own testing where you add another static method and in it you do some conditional logic where you say if and you run the test, you, you test the function in question and you look at the result and you say if the result is not the expected then you print a message and I've shown you how to include lots of other information to make sure you can pinpoint the error etc. Well all that's well and good but it turns out that there's a very easy test framework that's provided and usable from within BlueJ and it's a common one that's available in other parts of the Java world so it's a good one to get into here and it turns out it's just as easy to use this, actually easier to use this than it is to do your own coding there. So so this is simpler, it's faster, it's cool, so we're going to learn how to do that today. And the basics are, we're going to look how to create a unit test for a simple function, and we're also going to extend that to test preconditions, which are a little bit more interesting. So that's what the video will cover. So let's say that you have a simple grading program that's function is to simply take a percentage grade and turn it into a letter grade. Not exactly earth shattering, but let's say, you know, 90 and above is an A, 80 and above is a B, etc. <clears throat> so we want to test this thing and in it we haven't really written any code yet but you can see it's very simple we have a main that's simply going to drive the function and then we have a function that's going to take in a double of the percent grade and then it's going to return a letter grade now for the moment we've created a skeleton here a framework but we haven't written any code yet it's not a bad idea to write your test code first uh, it'll make you think differently about how you code it'll make you think of some cases that you might forget while you're working on your code and this is the uh, basic concept concept of test driven development. Write the test first and then you'll figure out later when you write the code you'll put those tests to work. Also once you've written the code you are mentally married to what you've done and you're going to be over committed to your own ideas and by writing the testing first you'll sort of get that uh, that mentality of let me test it thoroughly and you'll get that aside from any logic that you have written and therefore you won't be married to stuff uh, so it's a good time to do it. So let's look at how easy it is to write a test for this and how to use this then to run tests. Okay, to start this, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to the BlueJ project view and I'm going to turn on my test tools. So you can see here that I can do tools preferences. I'm going to come to the interface tab and I'm going to say show unit testing tools. Now you can still do the work without this, but this way you'll have the thing right on your UI and by clicking one button you can make everything go. So it's just an extra little bit. I then need to create a new class. So I'm going to go new class and I'm going to do a unit test test and I'm going to tell it, uh, call it, uh, you know, test uh, percent to grade, right? It's going to test various percent to grade functionality. So I'm going to put that all in one unit test class. It's going to create that and it's going to put it here in my project view. Now, the next thing I'm going to do to make life really easy is so that I don't even have to look at how to code the thing, it will actually generate some code for me really easily. So I'm going to t right click this and I'm going to say I want to create a test method. Now once I click that, it says give me a name for it and let's say I'm going to do, uh, you know, test, uh, it's going to percent to grade A. I'm going to write one test that's going to uh, test the A's, right, all of the A boundaries. Now you can do this as one big blob where you put all the tests in one, but it will get reported as a blob. So if something fails, uh, this will allow me to pinpoint it a little better than if I had them all. You know, you put 30 tests in one big method, you're only going to see one failure and it's a little bit harder to spot. If I break them out this way, I will see a little bit finer grain, so I'm going to do that. Now notice that it is now recording. Now all I have to do <clears throat> is go make something go. So I'm going to come to my main class here and I'm going to actually run this static method called percent to grade, which you can do from here, and I'm going to give it a number. So let's say 95. And I'm going to say OK. And now it says, what do I want to do? And I'm going to make an assertion, I'm going to make a statement that I believe that the result of 95 should really be an A. And then I'm going to say close. Now, we know the tests fail at this point. I don't care. It doesn't really matter. We're writing the test first anyway. I can then say I want to end because I have my sample already encoded. Now watch the brilliance of what it's created for you. 
With that little exercise, if I double click this unit test, it's going to come up and show me all the stuff that it's created. It added some imports. It created the header. It started a constructor. It also has a step that you can add code if you want to have a setup before every test case. So before every method is called, you may need to clear out some stuff, empty some stuff, uh, set some things to zero, whatever you want to do, you can do that here in the setup function and setup method. Same thing here with teardown. If you want something to be cleaned up after you run a test method, maybe you need to delete some stuff, you need to clear out a file, whatever, you would put it here. But here's the fun part. You'll notice that each of these is marked with a special tag this is not a javadoc tag. This is a tag that will let the framework know what kind of thing this is. It's kind of like the override tag that you may see. But this will say, hey, look, here is a test. This is one of my tests. And it is called percent to, you know, test percent to grade A. And now here is the operative piece. And that says, I assert that an A is going to be equal to, if I run from the grading class, percent to letter grade, and I pass it a 95, I'm assuming asserting that the A will be equal to that. That will be the result. That's pretty cool. Now that puts my expected, it puts my test, and now watch what we can do. I can close this guy or minimize it. Now to run my tests I can simply run this by clicking this button or I can right click and either run a specific test or say test all which is the same as running tests. So watch what happens. I run this thing and it says uh, wait a minute I have a failure. Notice that's an X, that's an X, it's a failure and it shows me I have no errors, one failure and I did one run and it says okay something is wrong. Now because we've done character uh, it's showing me 65 and 70. Maybe character is not as good as letters, uh, strings at this point, but you get the idea. So now the other cool thing is I can say show source. And show source takes me right to the line where the assertion failed. And I can go, oh, okay, 95 didn't turn into an A. Well, of course it didn't. I don't have any code there yet. I've just stubbed these things out. But that is how easy it is to run these tests. It's pretty brilliant. Now, let me paste some more tests in here so that we can move forward. So let me just paste in some other letters uh, for the rest of the tests, and then we'll move forward. So you'll see that what I have now is I've done very careful thinking about all of the boundaries. I've said, okay, what is the highest, what, what's a, you know, sort of a high end of a grade that I might expect? Well, 101. Now these are doubles, so I could put 101.0 to make the literals a little more specific. Yes, I could do that. Uh, and then 100 and then 90, because these are the boundaries, these are the interesting cases for an A. The interesting cases for a B would be an 89 and an 80. Now notice, if you weren't thinking as a tester, you might be putting in very boring cases like for an A you'd only test 95 and for a B you'd only test 85. Well, these are almost useless test cases. The boundaries are really where we want to spend our time because that's where the behavior changes. At 89, in fact we could even do 89.9, right? Since this is a double, that would be even a better test case. At 89.9 it's one behavior, but then at 90.0 it's another behavior. So this is where we want to spend our time is on the boundaries. And I've created created a test. Notice I just repeat the tag and I've created a test for each one of those so again I see a little bit more granularity in my results. Now again we know nothing that none of this is going to pass but if I compile this and then I go and say run tests I will see now that the only one that passes is an F because of course we've hard coded the results to an F. But we now have our unit tests and as we start writing our code they are in our pocket. We have done the thinking not having seen the code, not being married to the code and and we have these tests and we can run them at our leisure and whenever they are convenient. Now let's go back to our grading program and let's say that we now add some more of the code. So now I have fleshed out the code. You see that I've got each of the categories in an if statement and I return a real letter grade now. So I've done my work and I think that I've done a great job coding it up so I'm going to compile this and now I'm going to go run my tests. I'm going to compile those again and I'm going to say run tests and I see, hey, wait a minute, uh, all the letters worked except the D. There's something wrong with the D. So I click on this test, I see that there's a failure, I say show source, and it says, hey, wait a minute, I passed in 60, but somehow 60 wasn't a D? What went wrong with that? So let me go take a look at my original code and see what happened. Oh, wait a minute, I forgot a an equal sign. 
So you'll notice that a simple coding error now is caught very quickly because I've done good testing. I have good test cases. I can fix that. I can recompile it. I can go back and run my tests again after I recompile everything, right? Hit that button, run tests. Hey, now they all pass. So it is super convenient to have those test cases available in my pocket and I can run them a million times. It's amazing how when you change one little corner of the source code, sometimes some stuff starts failing and you didn't realize it. But here there is no cost to running these tests a million times while you're developing and it's so cool to have them. So that's the basics of how this thing works. Now I want to show you one more cool thing because you may uh, you may think, well, what happens in one case, there's one other case we haven't thought about, and that is what if during the grading program you're writing it and you go, wait a minute, I forgot I need a precondition here. I need a precondition where uh, anything less than zero I'm going to reject. I'm just going to have an illegal, throw an illegal argument exception because grade percentages can't be negative, right? You can't have anything below, below zero. So I have this precondition in place, which is great, but how do I test that? Because if I come over here and I try to write a test and I do something like this, where I can do a test on the precondition, but what's going to happen if I try to pass it a negative one in this context? Well, I can compile here and I can run, right? But I'm going to get a failure there. In fact, I get an error because it says, hey, wait a minute, I got an illegal argument exception. So it's not just a test case failure, it's actually an error. Something bad happened along the way. So what do I do to fix that? Well, it turns out there's a super easy way to do this, and all I have to do is after the test, uh, word there after the tag that says test, I simply have to add this one little extra piece in parentheses. Expected equals, I say the name of the exception that I'm expecting and then dot class. Once I do this, it's this, it says look, when you run this thing, you're going to expect to get an illegal argument exception. So now I can compile it here, I can come here, run compile, run tests, and now looky there, everything runs wonderfully. It's exactly as I want, all my tests pass. Now as I continue to work on my program, if I make any other code changes, I can simply rerun those tests with a click of a button, and again they're here. Now another thing that's very cool is that this is in completely separate code. You'll notice my grading uh, code is here and my unit test code is here. So it's easy to write unit test code, but it's also easy to strip it out before you actually compile this thing to ship out to customers. You could just simply delete that module and then compile the thing and send it out. So that is another thing we like about unit testing is that it's not going to interfere, make our code bigger, expose this, uh, you know, any of this to customers. It's very easy to separate it out. So that is a super quick introduction to how cool the unit test framework is, the JUnit test framework, and how simple it is to use it from within BlueJ. And so hopefully that's an interesting topic to you and it'll make your work very easy when you write unit tests for other projects that you do this quarter. Thanks for watching and let me know in forums or in email if you have any other questions. Thanks.